Yo, what's up, everybody? So we're live. We're going to do a little bit of sourcing using some Keepa features. And uh, let's hop right into it. Let me go and share my screen. And let's do this. So go there. Awesome. Let's go over to Keepa. We're going to be using the product finder today to see if we can. We'll start with the product finder. And then we'll probably go over to the deals page. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll also look to see if I get any notifications during this time. So let's use the product uh, tab first. So I'm over here on Keepa. You basically just have to go here to uh, product finder there. And all right. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to look for books that go up to 2 million in sales rank because I like this. I like to flip books that don't sell as frequently because generally when you find books that don't sell as frequently, they can definitely be undervalued at certain points in time. And so Going for high sales rank could be very helpful. 106 million products come back with that sales rank. Crazy. All right. First thing I'm going to do is go over here down to books. Make sure I select that. Because I'm all about all about uh, sourcing books. We go to books there. And let's just keep going. Let's see if we can. Let's say Amazon's price has to be at least. Let's say at least $75. Let's say the third party new price at least $75. We'll do that. And then we'll come down here. And let's go down to the used price of, let's say we want to look at something that's between, you know, $0 to, let's say 15 bucks. And let's say the 30 day average is something like, normally it's 30, $30 or more. Let's do that. So that's 27 products. That's actually not a ton of products here, right? So uh, let's just, let's just see what, what happens when we look at this 27 products. All right, let's see. Yeah, this actually looks pretty interesting right here. Okay, so this book definitely has a little bit of value, about 40 or 50 bucks. It's been gradually decreasing in value over time. You can actually see that buy box price just really recently dipped really low. Now, over time, this book has held some pretty good value, though. Is this a textbook? Let's see. Introduction to Economic Growth probably is a textbook. So let's go over here to Amazon real quick. Let's see what we got. So... This is a third edition. When did this come out? This came out in 2013. All right. So this has been out for a while. I don't see a newer edition. Usually if there's a newer edition, it's going to pop up right here. So I don't see that. Um, but let's go and take a look at the offers here. So it looks like we got basically three copies, all in acceptable condition. Goodwill normally, even if they're in acceptable condition, a lot of times they under-promise and over-deliver. So it might be okay. That book might actually be... Well, it says pages are stained, so maybe not. But sometimes... Uh, Goodwill definitely can can over over deliver for sure. Now let's see if we can find a fourth edition of this book because that is going to impact whether or not I want to buy this one. So I'm going to open up a new new tab here. I'm going to go over to Amazon and let's go and open this and let's just say fourth edition. Let's see if that pops up here. And introduction to economic growth. So I don't see it popping up. So this could very well be the newest edition. And if that is the newest edition, then this potentially could be something here. Let's see, definitely this book was moving quite a bit, right around like 40 bucks. The buy box price is right around 40 as well. So that's probably what it's moving at. Um, yeah, the used offer count isn't really any lower than it was in the past when it was selling for 70 plus. So last thing I'm going to do is try to Google this real quick, see if we can see if there's a newer edition. This one, Economic Growth. Who's the author? Charles. So that you can actually see that this copy... Or this is from 1998, so that's actually got to be the the older edition there. But um, yeah, you basically got three. I probably the reason I'm not going to pop on this, but if I were to pop on this, I would I want one of these to be acceptable. And let's see what the prime offers are at. They're right around. So one is actually at 18, and it goes up to 59. So yeah, probably what I would do if I were to pick up this book, I'd probably try to sell it for like right around 45. So the lowest price right now would be right around 18. So, I mean, I definitely want to be that great of a greater, I mean, maybe $9, which would be decent, but um, let's just keep moving. Let's just keep moving. I think we can find better deals than that. Let's just keep going. This is something that looks like it's a little bit undervalued, but this is something that just doesn't really move a lot. So you'd be holding this for a long time. Generally, when this has sold, though, the used price has been pretty high. So that's the good news. But the bad news, again, is that this doesn't really move a lot. This is a global edition, so this is also a textbook. So I would bet that 
you know, if this was something that maybe was a little bit more niche, so that wasn't a textbook that possibly could hold value, then probably, um, oh, I would pay more attention to that. But because it's a textbook and it doesn't move that much, I'm going to move on. Let's see. This also looks somewhat interesting here. So we got about $56, about five or six sales. Then this came down to about 13. But again, this didn't really sell for the first six months out of last year. That's not necessarily a good sign, but generally it has held some value. Again, what we want to do is look at whether or not there's a newer edition of this out or not. So this is the first edition. Let's go down and see when this was published. 2017. Okay. Interstitial lung disease. Uh, interesting book there. Let's look at the offers here. Ideally, for books that don't move like this, you'd want only to be like one or two copies really low. If there's three or four copies, then remember, this book just doesn't really move a lot. So if it's not moving a lot, then there's quite a few offers at a low price. It's probably going to stay there for a while. Now, like I said, I think this is probably a... Pro it looks like this is probably the newest edition because, again, usually the newest edition would be attached to a listing if there was a newer edition. So let me just do this. Type in second edition. And uh, let's see. This one's kind of Lung Disease and Honest Memoir. I don't think that's the same book, though. So, yeah. So, I mean, if this was like maybe one copy at 13, I would consider buying it. But there's four copies, though. So four copies, basically, at 17 free shipping. So this is something that I would I'd probably pass on here. Even though it does, I mean, data in the past does look pretty good, but... You know, over time, textbooks become less relevant. So, further you look back in time for textbooks, the less, you know, less accurate or not less accurate, but the less you can really rely on that data. So, you know, I'll probably go and pass on that. Let's keep moving. Same thing here. This one doesn't move a ton. Got a sale back here for 40, one for 30, one for 65, a couple for 50, and then it's come all the way down to about 12. But again, this is something that doesn't move a ton. The new handbook of research on music teaching. Let's see. Illustrated edition. This came out in 2002. Okay, so this has been out for a long time. That's actually really good to know that it's been out for about 20 years. You can see that, I mean, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, like it's still selling. It's definitely not selling as much as it used to sell for. Like it was selling for, looks like over 100 for a little bit there. But what is good news is that it did actually drop in price back here in 2021, but then it actually did recover. So even though it got all the way back down to 10, it came back up, sold a couple of times at 60. So again, this is really going to be dependent upon the used offer count and also how many used offers that are available there. So what I would do is go ahead and look at the offer. So we got two offers. This is pretty good. Two at basically 15. Actually, this person has two in stock. So it's about three copies right around like 15. And then it goes up to like 20, 30. So... Let's see, Prime's at 42. Again, but the problem with this is the used offer count is actually a little bit up. It's right around like 14. Generally, in the past, it's been around 10. And usually a 10 to 14, like going from 10 to 14 in used offer counts, not that big of a deal. But if this is something that doesn't move that much, it is kind of a big deal. Now, we can see that the thrift books did sell theirs right around 47 because you can see that their stock went from 1 to 0 when their price was 47. So they did move theirs at 47. But again, this would take a while to move this product. So even if you're picking this up for, I think it was like 15 or 16 bucks, it'd be a, it'd be a good flip, but it would take a while. So I'm honestly going to pass on that one as well. All right, let's see. What's this? Corporate valuation theory, evidence, and practice. Uh, this book is actually sold for over $100 a few times uh, in January. So that's that's nice to know. Back here in September though, which is generally a textbook season, it was actually really low. It was only six bucks. So that's crazy how big of a spread in price that is. Corporation or corporate value, valuation theory, let's see. Now I did just see a pretty significant drop went from 70 all the way down to, what do we got here? All the way down to 39, is that right? No, that can't be right. It says 39. So maybe someone already bought one of these copies because it says 39. But the Kiva graph says that it went all the way down to 12. So interesting. It looks like the data. Either someone already bought that or it's a little off. Yeah, what I mean, what's likely is that there are three people tracking this at for since you know starting at 48. So someone could have got a notification and bought that one. But let's see.
Okay, so this book sold a couple times for 70, went all the way down to about five bucks. Went down about five bucks again. Actually went up to 40, you know, 40 to 50 dollars, sold a few times there. And again, this is a book that kind of goes up and down in process prints or in up and down price. Principles of ceramics processing. Second edition. This looks like an old book. Yeah, this came out in 1995. Okay, so again, this is this is good to see again that. This is this came out in 1995. Notice that its price goes up and down over time. It usually ebbs and flows with the used offer count. In general, the used offer count is actually down down a little bit since you know 2017, 2018, 2019. And the good news is that you've seen it come down in price, go back up, come back down, and go back up again. So offer count is actually pretty pretty stable right now. It's right around 20. It, ideally, so I, right now it's about 14, right? It's what we can pick it up for. But ideally, we would have picked it up at its cheapest price. Let's go and take a look at these offers here. So we have $14.95 plus $4 shipping. So you had to pay about $18, but there's about there's two copies, $18, then $20, and then it goes up to $50. What I would say is that, you know, ideally you'd probably want to pick this up for about five or six bucks plus shipping. So you'd ideally you'd pick it up for about $10. Right now, if you wanted to buy, you'd have to pay $18, which is a little bit steep. What do I think you could sell this for? I mean, if we just click these, this use buy box here, this person moved theirs at $49.99. So, I mean, if you input $49.99 in the seller app, then I mean, it's a $13 profit, which is not bad. And then since then, you can see the buy box window right now is actually at $99. So probably, I doubt that they're probably going to get that sell at $99. I mean, they could, if you look back, like basically a year past in data, like back in January and March, it was up to $80. So it's, it's not impossible. And at that time, the used offer count was about the same. So this is something that I would definitely track. And I'd probably track this for something like, six or seven dollars because again this came out a long time ago this came out in 1995 and it's still selling to this day pretty frequently considering it's so old now i don't know if i would want to necessarily jump on the 18 but uh, i don't think that would be a bad deal i think you would definitely make money so let's see what is the so yeah we got basically four offers here five five offers at like 99 so i think those guys are a little bit shooting for the moon. I mean, technically, at the beginning of this year, it was selling for about 80 bucks. So that is that is possible. But um, yeah, that's something that I would track. So let's see what else we got here. Human behavior. Yeah, this is a really new book. 250 days. Human behavioral ecology and coastal environments. So one thing you have to be careful about new books that come out, like this is coming out technically, it came out not that long ago, about 14 days ago. That's when it was just started to be sold. I mean, it has been on Amazon for 250 days, but it started selling just recently is you got to be, you never know like what sort of demand a book's going to have. Like we don't know if this is going to be a book that actually is going to move well and meaning if people actually want it. But I mean, if Amazon stocks up a thousand, that's probably... And a good indication that this book is is probably going to sell. I mean, one thing that we have seen is people have actually started to start buy it, started to buy it. So we can see we got one sell, two sells, three sells, four sells. We had four four sales rank drops, which is pretty good. But again, don't really know how popular this is going to be. It's really interesting that the used price is already so low on this book, though. So, but there are four copies. Well, I probably would if there was if it was just one copy of each. Like if this. If this person to have four, I probably would buy one of them, but I'm gonna pass on that one. Let's see what else we got. Um, don't see anything here. Okay, this actually looks pretty interesting. Yeah, this might be. This could potentially be a pickup. All right, this basically year round is sold for about twenty five plus. Right, I guess right around twenty to twenty five. And this is a handbook here. Let's see what we got. High speed, first edition. When this come out, two thousand. All right, so this came out a long time ago, over twenty years ago, and five. So we'd pick it up for right around nine dollars. So goodwill, signs of wear and consistent use. That's in good condition. So that's the book that I probably would buy there. And let's see, did any of the prime sellers move this? Yeah. So somebody moved this at thirty three dollars in prime. Texas book consignments. I've actually bought from them before. But no, notice that this book also has history of going down to really cheap prices and recovering in price, which is good news. And again, this has been out for a long time. So this is, again, something that I would consider tracking. I mean, it's not a book that really inherently holds a lot of value, but something like this that goes down and up in value pretty consistently is something to look out for. And I think right now this is undervalued. So this is something I definitely would actually buy. 
So you'd buy, you spend what? You spend nine eighty two on this. <laughs> I would personally try to. Wow, this one sells up for ninety. I would probably send mine in prime and try to sell it for maybe like forty. Let's see what the prime offers are at. We got them at sixty eight and then one twenty three. So prime offers are actually really really expensive. <clears throat> Uh, if, if it were me though, what I'd try to do is probably send it in, try to sell for like 45, you make a good $18 profit. So I'd say that's a book. That's a pretty good, good book. I'd buy one copy of that. I would also track that book and I would track it for probably right around like $6. I'll track that. Now it's the end of that. So let's go back to the filters. Let's see if we can find some more, some more books. See, that only found technically 24 products. So, uh, let's Let's see what we can do here. So use price under 15, 30 day average was at least 30 or, or over. Okay. Let's try, let's try this. Let's try uh, Amazon out of stock. And that shows, so we just say Amazon's out of stock. That brings back a whole bunch more listings. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Harmony and voice leading. All right. So what I'm looking at here again, when is the book selling the most? So we got a lot of sales rank drops right around 50. We got some back here in August when it was textbook season. Some of these sales were over 100. So that shows you the power of textbook season. It looks like at the lowest price, this was right around 18. And now today it's actually the lowest it's ever been right around $10. Used offer count is actually... Uh, pretty low. I mean, it's right around like 17 or 18. So it's not, it hasn't really increased a lot. So let's take a look to see if, and actually it says that the lowest price is 39. So keep us definitely, it's not necessarily wrong. Someone probably just bought one of the copies, but it looks like it was a prime seller. Let's see. Use buy box. It still says that they're in stock, like which is kind of weird. But it doesn't show that over here on Amazon. So not sure what the reason for that is. Maybe it's just an, maybe that's an error from Keepa. I don't know. That's you know, Keepa can't always be right, I guess, either. All right, let's see what else we got. Architect. Oh, this looks interesting. All right, so this is sold for over a hundred dollars, but this is a box set. This is a six book collection box set. Collection one, two, three, your pre-reader, rhyming words, and sight words. So there's six books that come with this. I, I bet you that all of these offers down here probably are missing the stuff that you need. That's probably why it's so cheap. So we can so seven dollars over here. Let's look at the details here. Seven dollars use free shipping as well. Um, details. It says all pages and the cover are intact, maybe it's significant wear pages. So this doesn't say if it comes with everything. And that's probably the that's probably the reason why it's so cheap right now. Um, why can't I see all the other offers though? This is weird. Normally, normally it'd be showing right up around here. So, not sure why it's not showing the other offers. But can we go here? Let's go to data. Let's look at what the other offers are right now. Let's go to used prices, stock prices, ninety-seven, eleven. Yeah, I don't know why it's not showing any of the other, the other prices. Let's go ahead and refresh this, see what we got. Other sellers on Amazon. That's weird. I don't know. That would be something that would be cool to look at because it has, I mean, it does definitely sell for quite a bit of money, but you have to have everything. That's, a, that's the, uh, the problem. And I doubt that most of those lower prices are going to have everything. So 23, let's see. How the world thinks. Great. Okay, this looks somewhat decent. So we have a number of sales at 70, right, right around $70. And you can see that, um, it, I mean, it doesn't really sell a lot, but the price did drop down to 14. So again, this is because this just doesn't move. This is going to be dependent upon how many offers there are. So we got fourteen fifty, and there is a newer edition of this available, which is usually not a good sign. But 
we probably just have to do a little more research. Okay, a couple of these are prime offers. So because there are three prime offers here, really low at 18, I'm going to actually pass on this. Because again, this is something that just doesn't really move a whole ton. And there is a newer edition out available as well. So yeah, I'm going to go and pass on that one. But that that is kind of what we're looking for, a sort of drop in price like that. And let's see here. So 46 down to 13. Sold a couple times. But generally, this is a book that doesn't really sell either. So there's got to be better stuff out there. Okay, so what is this? The complete Jack the Ripper A to C. So we're about 25. 25 is kind of like the base price what this has been selling for. It's down to 13. So, I mean, it's a little bit undervalued, but I wouldn't say it's undervalued enough where I even really want to look at it. Nor did that book really move a ton. All right, this hasn't actually had an intense repricing more recently. So it started basically up here at 70, repriced all the way down here at about $13. And 45 looks like to be what it's moving at. So 45 there. This is actually probably a sell at 19, 20, a couple sales, maybe 30 or 40. So yeah, again, this is something that doesn't look like it holds a ton of value either. So I'm gonna pass. Same thing here, five dollars. The letters of Miss Gaskell. Interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna move on to that one. That one looked like it was okay though. See if we got anything else. Faith misguided. Called base price right around like 20, maybe down to nine there. So we're not even at base. I mean, we're close to base price. And this is again something that ebbs and flows. So this is a good sign. This is something that you want to track. Things that go up and down in value and have shown that a, that a lot in the past. Because this is probably something that's going to go up in value again. Let's look at what the offers are. So we got one. This is from 1988, by the way. So this is an old book. We got an offer at 13. We got about four or five offers at 13. And then it goes up to, to 22 and then 50. And let's see. What have this been moving? Has any of these third party or any of these moved in the buy box? And no. Okay, 28. This is a collectible offer probably. Yeah, right around 43. So... This is something that would need to be a little bit cheaper, but what I would do is maybe track this for for right around like $4, I think is what I would track that at. But that's something that I think has some pretty good potential. It won't sell for a lot, but I think it'd be somewhat decent. These these case books just tank in price. Look at this, sold four, three or four times for $1.90, and then now it's down to $4.60. So be really careful with these these case books because they can tank in price so fast. It's like it's not even crazy. Or it's not even funny how fast these can these can tank in price. This is the first edition, actually. When did this come out? This came out in 2018. It's weird. I don't actually see a newer edition. Uh, let's see what the used offers are here. Yeah, three, two. So you got about five copies at a really low price, and you got a really high prime offer there. So this is again something that didn't really move. Uh, it doesn't really move much. It, clearly, this is a January textbook because look, all the sales here in January, all the sales there in January. This is actually a really good example of January textbook season. All the sales in January there. Again, all the sales in January there. And now all of a sudden it has bottomed out. So this is going to come down to like buying. This would come down to, again, number of offers. And then also, is there a newer edition of this likely to come out? This is the first edition. So there's actually no past history. Like we don't know how long the publishing cycle is, but most of these American casebook books, their publishing cycle is usually around like anywhere from two to four years. So this is something that, again, I would pass on, but it's really interesting to, this is a really cool book to see um, January textbook season. So I'm actually going to save that as an example um, to show people what I mean when I talk about textbook season, but specifically when I talk about textbook season, like only one textbook season, because some books will sell really well during both. January and also August, and some other books might only sell during January, or others might only sell during August. So that's a really good example of that. Okay, not really seeing anything else that's making me too excited here. This might be something to track this nature, nature's and properties of soil. So this definitely went increased in price a little bit. Generally, this hovers right around like thirty bucks though. So not not quite enough there for me. Let's look at this one. 
So a couple of sales at 45, coming back down to 14. A little bit undervalued. Doesn't really move a ton, though. So some of that I'd pass on. And let's just keep it rolling. Principles. Hmm, this is a little interesting. Sold that back here in January for about 40 to 50. This is something that's been really low in the past. So you can actually see it starting to nosedive back down. This looks like it definitely ebbs and flows with textbook season. So you can see previous August in 2021. Definitely saw an increase in price. 2022 didn't really see an in-pricing increase in price though. So, but then again, January did. So that's the thing is like you can't ever predict textbook season. Um, you can try to identify patterns, but it's you know it's not 100 percent that what you think is going to happen is actually going to happen. Harry Potter, the Italian edition. I don't even. I mean, that makes sense that there'd be other non-English versions, but on Amazon, an Italian edition. So this is something that doesn't move a lot, probably because. Most people in the United States don't speak Italian, but some people do. So that's cool. And you can see this has gone all the way down to about $8. This sell is probably from the prime seller. Looks like it was, yeah, probably prime seller sold this for $75. Sold this one for $15. This is like, so, I mean, this is Harry Potter though. So Harry Potter is definitely get a hold value, right? It's a basically a brand in and of itself. And you can see this is acceptable. This comes from St. Vinny's Charitable. So, I mean, this is going to sell because... Basically, this is the cheapest it's ever been on Amazon. People have been willing to pay more than that. If this were a good copy, I might consider. But again, this is something that doesn't move very very often. I mean, you would be in this for maybe like twelve fifty, and if you're in it for about twelve fifty, you'd probably want to. I mean, probably want to try to sell for like sell for thirty bucks. I mean, you make only a couple bucks. I mean, like I said, this has sold for more than that, but you you'd have to wait a while to do that. So something that I would pass on. Fortunately. It doesn't just really sell that often. So that's going to be the major issue there. Okay, I'm not seeing anything else that looks too amazing to me here. So let's go ahead and let's filter. Let's change these results a little bit. Let's go over here to advanced filter. And instead of doing this up to 15, let's go up to, let's look for books that are between $15 to, let's say, $25 that over the last 30 days are average. Let's do a 30-day average and a 90-day average of, let's say, 35, 35 and above like this. We got 137 products. Maybe let's go a little bit further to filter that a little bit. Let's go 45, 37. That's good. 37 products is good for sure. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Hey, dude, thanks for the videos. It helped me a lot. Yeah, man, no worries. I'm glad you find them helpful. Are you finding any books? Let me know. Have you picked anything up yet? I'd be curious to know. Let's see. All right, so this came up with 37 products for us to look at. Let's see if any of them are actually going to get a pan out here for us. Lucy Parsons. Don't know who that is. Maybe I should know who that is. Current price around on 24, so not enough for me there. A decrease in price. Let's see. All right, this seen a, this has seen a massive repricing war. Basically, from $200 all the way down to about $27. So, massive repricing war. Let's see when this is moving. What is causing this? The collectible, the collectible price is causing this graph to look crazy. So, it sold here right around like $75, $65, a couple times to $89. Then didn't sell for a long time, probably because Amazon or you know third parties weren't in stock. And then when they were in stock, it was, the price it was super high and the, the prices started to come down a little bit. And if we look a little bit further back in time, I mean, this was moving mostly around like $30. So this is basically just come back down to a price that looks like it's a little bit more reasonable. So horn, please, decorated trucks of India. This looks like it's still in a repricing war. So it's possible that this is just going to keep going down and down. So this is something that I would want to track because I'm not really confident that buying at 24 is going to be a great deal. But this also... 19 in stock okay so on a book that doesn't move that much 19 in stock is not good i mean in order to move these copies they're probably gonna have to price they're probably gonna have to be around like i guess 20 dollars. but i guess just guess is what they're at right now so i'm gonna go and pass on that because there's just way too many offers on that listing american constitution let's see traveling laboratory manual let's keep going What is this right here? Glencoe, the developing child. We're down to about 19. Selling for around 45. Let's see if 
this is if there's a newer edition. All right, there is a newer edition of this available. The developing child. Yeah. So this is probably something I'm gonna pass on. Glenn Kelly Development Child. This is the first edition. Student, this is the second. Yeah. Second edition doesn't even have any value either. So that's not a good sign. If the newer edition doesn't even have value, then why would the older edition have value? Um, let's see what else we got here. Moby Dick. All right. This looks interesting here. So we got construction law contracts. It's going for about 75. Couple sales back here in the past around 40. You can pick it up for 20. Doesn't seem super exciting to me, but see what the offers look like. Goes 20, 24, then goes 89. So there's actually three copies right around like $24. Then it goes up to 80. No prime seller on the listing, which is good news. And it, like I said, it was moving for 70 uh, back here in January. But if we go back in time, Definitely looks like this has a little bit of textbook seasonality to it. So January always looks like to be a time when it's moving. So you might have to wait a while for this to sell. But if you were to pick up one of these for about 24 and flip it for 75, I mean, that would definitely be a good a good profit. I definitely want to, if I were to buy this, I probably wouldn't buy more than one. The reason why is because this past data, the, the used price of this book was actually pretty low. It was right around like 30 to 40. So it wasn't quite high enough for me to be super confident buying more than one copy. So if I were to buy one copy, it probably would just be just one. I'd buy for 24, try to flip it for like 75. That'd be my goal. And, you know, worst case scenario, you flip it for like 50, you make a $10 profit, which, you know, obviously is not bad in the grand scheme of things, but it's not going to be paying your rent. Let's just say that. What is this here? 45, 20, 60, 20. Human energy systems. Tarot system, yeah. Let's keep going. All right, this actually saw a pretty significant dip in price. It went down to about 16 bucks, so it was moving from about 50 to 60. This is volume three, part one, two, and three, though. It looks like a multiple volume set, and that's actually gonna be really heavy to ship in. So I'm gonna go and pass on that. So we got eight people in here. How's it going, everybody? What's what's going on? Where are you coming from? Any questions that you got? Feel free to throw anything in the chat if you want. I'm gonna go over to the keep a deals page. I'm also gonna just Quick, quickly open up flip mine real quick because I do source quite a bit from eBay as well. I do some eBay to Amazon, um, eBay to Amazon flips using flip mine. So let's take a look at these, see if anything looks cool here. Nothing too exciting. I want to look at this book right here. That's a lot. That is potentially a very expensive book. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> $310 for this book. What is wrong? Why is this? Okay, yeah, this is completely unrealistic. That's why. Kiva shows this selling for right around 30 to 40 bucks. So remember, this is just another example of people can price their book for whatever they want. There's only, there's nine people on this listing. All of these people, absolutely no idea what they're doing because... There is no historical data to show that this book sells for $300. I mean, the most that this book has sold for is $103, which is honestly already pretty insane. But generally, this book is moving for right around like $30 to $40. Bucks. So yeah, this is this is never going to sell at $300. But I mean, people do it. So I don't know. Denise says, thanks for your expertise. You're welcome, Denise. You're welcome. I wonder, what is your definition of a great deal as far as ROI, sell velocity, and if there are other parameters you're looking for? Yeah, good question. A great deal for ROI, I would say over 100% for sure. I mean, honestly, a great deal would be like 200%. You spend 20, you make $50 profit. Like that, that would be a great deal. Sales velocity is just, I mean, it's a function of how much you're investing. If it's like you're investing a lot of money, then you know, you probably would want to get that capital back quicker. You would probably want to get it back sooner. Uh, but for velocity, it, it just comes down to what the potential ROI is. So for me, if I can potentially get 200% ROI, I'm definitely okay waiting on something that's a little bit slower moving because I know that I'm buying a book that's truly undervalued. It's something that might not sell very frequently, but when it does sell, like, you know, it's going to sell for $75 or whatever whatever it is, it's going to give, give me back 
uh, you know, two X return. So I wouldn't say like there's a hard ironclad rule. I would just say it's dependent basically upon how much potential profit, like what's the potential return. And so a, I would consider a 50% ROI a great deal on a book that's going to move in a week. Like that's an amazing deal. But for a book that's going to move in three months, a 50% ROI is not really a good deal in my opinion because there are better deals out there. Um, so yeah, I would say for me again, my average book takes about three and a half months to sell. And I, my average book, I buy 27, I sell 90, I sell for, sell for 99. So I would say, you know, over 2Xing, you know, so basically 200% profit, like that's, I would say that's the sweet spot for me. So if I can buy something, you know, get a 2X return on it and sell it within three and a half months, I'd say that's a great deal for me. Dude says, I'm just brand new in the Amazon world. One of my coworker friends has been doing this for six months and he motivated me to do it. Let's go. That's awesome. Have you done any thrifting, any uh, library sales? I'm assuming you're here for books. So have you done any of that? Or are you trying to go all just re, uh, all online arbitrage with books? Good question. I don't see anything else here on Flipmind that looks too, too amazing. Except this actually could be this one man's view of the world. This could be something that's interesting. $32 by Zuber. So I've seen that that seller before quite a bit. You can buy it on Amazon for a little bit cheaper, but yeah, this is actually a good example of a of a book that probably would be a decent Amazon to Amazon flip. And the reason why I say that is over the past year, this has been moving for significantly above what you could buy it for right now. The used offer count is a little bit up. So you can see that the used offer count up until recently was right around 20, which is about double what it was in the past when it was selling for over 100. So that's why it makes sense that as more people sell this book, the price came down a little bit. You can actually see that buy box price trailing down a little bit as well. That buy box price is this little, these little purple dots here. So you can see started out $100, gone down to $87, keeps on sliding down. Now it's right around $65. Actually, the ideal time to have bought this would have been February 26, where you could have bought it for about maybe $9 plus shipping. Right now it's around $22. So it's a little bit more expensive than it was in the past. But we got one good copy for 22 free shipping. Then it goes up to 38, 38. And I think all the primes are right around 60 where they at. Yeah, 64, 67, 80. So this is this came out in 2013. So definitely has been out for a while. Definitely not a textbook. What I would do is open up this data. Look, how much further in the past has this been? Uh, you know, if we look at the data in the past, what has it been selling for? How consistently has it been selling? What has that lowest use price been? 2021, pretty consistently, it was about 45. So what that tells me is, this book has a pretty good, like pretty good floor value. It definitely does have some value in use condition. Like I said, used offer count is up a little bit, so we would expect that the price, at least for right now, to, to stay a little bit, uh, a little bit lower than on, on average. But again, this book came out in 2013. There really haven't been new copies that have come onto the scene. Um, like there hasn't been a flood of new, new third-party copies because I mean, if we look at Basically, the last three years, the lowest new price at, it was around 90, and it's actually been much higher than that in the recent past. So it's not like this is being flooded on the market in new conditions. So over time, this user offer account should probably come back to what it was looking at right around here. And when it does come down and gets, gets a little bit lower, that's when you have the opportunity to sell it for maybe upwards of 75. So I, if it, this were me, I, I would honestly pop on this book. I would buy this this good copy here for 22. And I'm not, it's not like I would wait to try to, to maximize every penny. I'd probably would just try to sell it for 65. So I'd buy it for 22, try to match the buy box to 65. It'd probably be 100% ROI. I bet you this would move in a couple months, probably about two months if you were to buy that. So I'd say that's a pretty good deal. Over here is $32 on eBay. So it's actually a little bit more expensive, but this is also something that I'm going to go ahead and track. So I'm going to come over here, track this for, let me go and track this for like $15. I think that might be good. And if anyone is going to buy that, feel free to. If not, at the end of the stream, I'm going to go pick that up. Let's do it. How much are your costs in average a month? Uh, I would say on it, it depends on what, like each month. I would say each month spending probably on the minimum, like 3500 maybe up to 7000 So that's probably what I'm spending on books on a given month. Probably, I mean, if you average everything out, it's probably just under 5000 a month is what I'd spend on books. Uh, other costs, you know, I have to listing service. So I use GoToLister. What else do I use? Uh, I use Keep. Obviously, that's like a twenty dollars a month subscription. I have Be Cool, which is a repriser. So that's about fifty dollars a month. So I mean, it's definitely not cheap to do my operation, which is I've got you know quite a few softwares to help me out and to help with like listing, to help with uh, 
you know, just like Keepa, you need that for your basic research. Um, be cool, you need that for repricing. So, I mean, it's definitely not cheap. What I would say if you're new to is that you should probably do go the thrift store route to begin with just to build a bit of capital. So there's tons of videos online where you can, you know, basically buy a, a Bluetooth barcode scanner. You can go to thrift stores and library sales and, and you can go ahead and find books that way. So, yo, what's up, Seth? How's it going, man? Hey, I'm wondering if, uh, if you're streaming a little bit later today, maybe in like an hour or two hours, if you want to, maybe we can do like a, a stream together if you're interested in that, but let me know. Good to see you here. All right, let's go ahead and yeah, so you said you want to focus on books. Definitely. I think books is definitely a great way to get started if you're just getting into the game for sure. Like I said, I would recommend building up a little bit of capital at first though because, you know, at least what I do, it, it's not cheap, right? It's like it, it does definitely take quite a bit of money to, to do what I'm doing. So this book is really interesting. Amazon just came back in stock on this. So you can see $8 prime shipping sold by Amazon. Not sure. It'll probably tell us how many they have in stock here, but look at this keep keep graph. This was selling consistently for thirty five dollars in used condition condition, and all of a sudden, Amazon came on the listing listing and just ruined everyone. So, uh, uh, yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, let's keep going. Um, what do we got? Yeah, you wanted my channel. Yeah, let's do it on your channel. What time you want to do it? You want to do it in like an hour or something? I'd be down. If you if you're if you're up for it, all right. Let's see what else we got. Um, see if there's anything else. Looks pretty decent. The New World Order. This looks good. Seven. Oh, actually, not as good as I thought it would. New World Order: The Ancient Plan of Secret Societies. <laughs> that seems very conspiracy conspiracy theory like um <laughs> let's see what else we got 15 skip the beat mm -hmm. let's see calculus multivariable all right this looks actually really interesting here this was selling hundred dollars plus basically august also this january back here in the first like six months out of last year though was i mean Use price was still pretty healthy. It was right around like 45 bucks. It only moved a couple times, but clearly this is a textbook that has a lot of seasonality in the textbook season. And it is really cheap right now. So the next textbook season that's coming up is August. So you would still have to wait five or six months to get there. And you can see that this book is just going lower and lower. So it is possible that maybe tracking this book would be a good idea. But we got one unacceptable. We actually have two unacceptable condition. Slightly worn. This is actually not a bad... Not a bad description. It's a slightly worn that indicates that maybe it's not in terrible condition. <laughs> Obviously, we'd want to buy it in good condition, but they also have 80% feedback, which is actually pretty bad on Amazon. So not sure if I'd want to buy that one. Uh, this just says acceptable condition as well. So not really, not really much of a, of a description there, but I would definitely consider buying maybe one of those. Uh, but you'd have to wait on this. You'd have to wait till September, but that definitely would be a good deal if those were in good condition. I would pick one of those up for sure. Okay, let's do it, man. So it's 7 p.m., so 4 p.m., let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to wrap up here. I'm going to wrap up here in a little bit. Um, and, uh, and then let's do that, man. Super excited. All right, let's keep going. Is there anything else? Hidden truth, psychology. This is down to 74. Russian from intermediate to advanced. This is potentially something that would be a good flip. However, it doesn't sell a ton. And also you'd have to put up quite a bit of capital. So this is something I probably would skip, even though you have to like 70 bucks is what you could uh, pay for this. You might be able to flip it for 160 or 170, but also it doesn't move a ton. So there is a risk that the price of this could come down or, or more people come on the listing. So because you'd have to basically put up so much capital, I would pro I would definitely pass on that one. Um, let's see. Let's look at this one here. Okay, so this is this is up for 80, 80 or ninety dollars was selling there. Recently the price has come down to 40. You can actually see I'm tracking this book for $30. So essentials of treasury management. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna skip that one for now. But wow, this this book definitely does have quite a bit of does have quite a bit of value. Let's go ahead and see 
when this book came out. So there are two copies right around like $48 free shipping. This came out in 2016. So it is possible that this could get a new new edition. It's probably very likely that it would, but uh, still a little bit, a little bit too expensive for my skin there. So we're going to pass on that. Um, let's see. Wow, this just bottomed in price. I mean, this is only sold once in the last year, but now you can buy this for ten dollars. So, hmm. Okay, this actually might have been a great deal. Looks like someone already bought it, but basically, what happened here is this book was listed at one hundred and thirty dollars for the last year, and nobody bought it. So that tells you clearly nobody, nobody wants that book at one hundred thirty dollars. It's way overvalued. Now you can see that the price went down to $13.98 and it's actually no longer available. So it's by HPB Inc. And you can see that if you go here to the listings that there is, that that is not available. But if we go back in time, we can actually see that this book was moving pretty reliably right around $70. So clearly this book, clearly whatever this is, this is a tarot deck. This has, this definitely has value. So at $10, I would have actually bought this even though Literally, it never sold one time. Oh, well, it sold once in the last year. Even though it only sold once in the year. Notice that someone came on this listing for about six days at $50 and then somebody bought it. So clearly there's demand. If someone bought it within six days of it being listed. Then it was out of stock for a little bit. Then it was just super overpriced. Nobody was willing to pay for it there. Um, and then all of a sudden someone bought that one. So this is something that I'm going to actually get to track this for $10 in the future. Because that's interesting. Um, Denise says, with, uh, with the free shipping, can we still do Amazon Amazon? If it's Amazon Prime, you'd have to jump on a non-Prime account and you'd have to pay for shipping. Um, if it's from a merchant fulfilled seller and they are already charging you for uh, shipping, then it's fine to buy it from a merchant fulfilled seller and do that. But if it's from, if it's Amazon Prime, then yeah, you'd have to jump on a non-Prime account and then buy, buy that book that way. So it says looking back beyond a year on the Kiva chart is underrated. Yeah, for example, that's a book that most I mean, that's actually a tarot deck, but some people would scan that with Scout IQ and they would just like obviously people are doing volume, right? Like if you're doing Scout IQ and you're going scanning, but the triggers would just give you like they wouldn't they they would say to not accept this book because the rank is four million. I mean, use price is really high, but no one no one had obviously bought it. But yeah, clearly. This is something that's not a textbook. This came out in 1990. This has been out in, you know, this has been out for over 30 years. So think about it. If this has been out that long, is there really any difference between 2018, 2019, 2020, 2020? Like not really. But it's really been out for 30 years. So clearly, if someone's willing to buy this in 20, 2018. Why would they not be willing to buy it in 2023? You know what I mean? So that's kind of my my thoughts on a book like that. And so that's something that I definitely would track. Um, let's see anything else. Let's just keep rolling. Let's keep it rolling. This came down in price a little bit, but definitely not enough for us to squeeze any margin out of that. Let's keep going. Looks like for some reason the keep chart is popping up on the left there. <laughs> what is this? Okay, so this book generally sells for around 30. So even though the price of this book has been really high, it only moved one time there at 298. These other times it moved was actually when the price dropped down to 39. So this book generally has value right around the $30 range. And so I would say at at, at the lowest point, right around 11, I mean, it was starting to become a little bit undervalued where you could buy and flip it. And you have seen that it, it sold once here for $49.99. So if we go back a little bit further back in time, you also can see that this book kind of has, kind of has ebbed and flowed a little bit, and its price has gone up and down, but it doesn't doesn't hold a ton of value. So I'm gonna pass. What is this study guide and test companion? This bottom out. So it looks like somebody came on this in new condition as a third party seller, basically just completely tanked the listing. So let's look at how many copies they have available because this is, you know, they got Amazon's got at least one here for $8.99. And then the seller's got 22. So that's the problem. with This is also the 2022 edition. If a book ever has uh, a year in it, usually means that there's going to be newer editions. And if they have 22 copies, I mean, I'm not even sure if this book sold more than 22 times in the past year. 
it'd probably be pretty close, probably barely over 22 times because it did sell quite a bit back here. But yeah, they have a lot of copies. It's going to take them forever to get, get rid of it. And if they're already that loan price, then that's something that I would move on from for sure. Now, we already looked at this book, but I want to open it again because last time we opened it, we couldn't see any of the used prices. It wouldn't show us, and it's still not showing us that. So I don't know, but that was a potential deal. The Gospel and the Zodiac. All right, here is a book that I want to track probably. This is just this book is just really weird though because its price has been really high in the past, but it doesn't it hasn't necessarily moved for that. I mean, this did factually move for. I mean, this is probably this did move for three hundred, which is crazy. This sell here is one fifty one, but then there's some sells at a little bit lower price, seventy five and one nineteen. But then if you go further back in a time, like this book actually was eight dollars for a good solid five or six days, and someone did buy it there. So. So this is kind of all over the place, but then notice that this has been listed for $1,400 before. So this person here, when there's only a one used offer count, they went from 748, then they listed it for 1400. And obviously nobody bought it because who in the right minds gets to spend that kind of money for a book, like even $478, like who's going to spend that amount of money. So with books that just go up and down in price, you really have to figure out what was it moving for? What was it selling for? So if I zoom in here, it looks like this moved for $8. And if I go back a little bit further, let's see what all these moved in. Most of these books, most of the time this book is selling when the price is lower. So $8 there, a couple times here at 45, sold here for nine, probably right here at 17. So this has shown potential of selling for decent money. Like here's a sell for 80, here's a couple for 14, there's a sell for 50. So I mean, it has definitely showed history of moving, but not at $81. Like I'm not, that's not a price that I would want to pay, but because this has gone as low as eight dollars before, I'm actually going to track this for ten dollars. And let's actually see how long how long has this book been out? Actually, I do want to see that because depending on how old it is, it came out in 2009. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to track it for three years. Then I'm going to track it for ten dollars. I think it would be a good pickup, honestly. Um, if it was right there. All right, let's just keep going. Let's see what else we got. All about the sourcing. Whiskey Rising. I see a lot of interesting books when you just look at books all day for sure. Richard. What is this? Bears of Ecology. 83. So it has seen a dip in price, but definitely not enough margin there. Um, let's see if there's anything else. HPB Algebra. What is this looking like? 14. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Gospel. Wait, isn't this the book that we just... <laughs> Didn't we just look at this book? We just... Gospel and the Zodiac, the secret truth about Jesus. Yeah, this is actually the same book. So I guess this is two different listings. That's really interesting. Uh, that's weird. So we just actually tracked this book here. Maybe is it the hardcover that we're looking at? Maybe that's what it is. Same book, yeah. Same book. It must be that, yeah, okay, we were looking at the paperback. So the graph that we just analyzed, that was a paperback. This one is the hardcover. So it is the same book. And I actually am tracking the hardcover. Is this hardcover? Yeah, I am tracking the hardcover. And you can see that uh, it did. it did actually hit my notification back here. What was this? March 2nd. So that was actually yesterday. Did I buy it? No, I, I didn't buy it. So I wasn't in time. But this is absolutely something I would have bought for $14.95. And that's why tracking is so helpful because this was moving for over $100. Um, and so if I was able to pick that up, that would have been a great that would have been a great pickup. Let's go over to flip mine. Let's see if there's anything there. Yeah, it didn't look like anything's updated. Let me refresh this. And let's actually look at some key posts. See if I got any notifications in the past year. Seth coming in with same book. Yes, sir. Same book. Um, flip mine. Yeah, so nothing, nothing really new updating here. And let's go to recent notifications. Anything look interesting? The Atlas of the Middle Earth. All right, so this... 
this is why you would track a book here. Let's take a look. So the Alice of Middle Earth hardcover 1991. This is not a textbook, obviously. Buy box right now is $172. If you look here, book has held pretty good value. Like for most of the year, this has been over 75. There was a point in time where there's a little bit of a repricing more in the past, went down for about like 30, 35 bucks. But generally this has been selling for 75 plus. And a lot of these sales, like these, all these sales in here are over 160. Then all of a sudden you can see that Back here in February 21st, a repricing war started between at least two sellers. Now the price came down. I actually hit my tracker at 25. So now it's at 22. So the question is, how many offers are there? So it looks like we have Goodwill at 21 plus shipping and then another Goodwill copy. So these are definitely, these are 100% undervalued. The problem with this is that these are both acceptable conditions. This one says cocked spine. And this one says fairly worn, but readable and intact. So if I were to buy one, I'd probably buy this one, but this is still significantly more money than this. So I wish I we would, this is possibly bent, discoloration. Yeah. So I mean, one of the reasons, so basically Goodwill is just under, is in a repricing war against it, its other account. But if this was in good condition at a hundred percent pop on this, this would be a good, a good pickup. But um, unfortunately, unfortunately not. it looks like the paperback is actually available for a lot cheaper. Probably the sales rank on this is amazing. Yeah, sales rank on this is great because people definitely want this book. It's just that the hardcover is so expensive that you know there's not going to be many people who want to buy that. So that's cool. So let's see. Uh, we got Victor Galagos. How's it going, Victor? Nice to see you, Victor from Master Book Flippers. What's up? Basically, you just replace the ten digits in the middle of the link with the new ISBN you're looking for. That is how you can see the used prices when Amazon doesn't know. Oh, I did not even know that. Can I even go back and find that? Let's see. Where is that book? That was back in the Keep a Deals page. So I don't even know if I can find that again. But place the 10 digits in the middle of the link with the new ISBN you're looking for. This is how you can see the used prices when Amazon doesn't. Okay, that's really helpful. Thanks, Victor. I appreciate that. How's it going, by the way, Victor? How's uh, how's Master Book Flippers going? Uh, how is... Uh, How's your how's your February? How did you how did you? I'm curious to know how you how you did in your sales and stuff. But thanks for stopping by. Cool that you're here, man. Uh, let's let's see any other notifications. That is the link. Um, I think Victor. Um, I think if you if you pasted the link in the chat, it didn't, doesn't actually show me. So the only messages that I see is this one and this one. So if you did paste the link, I don't think the chat allows you to paste links. So maybe I have to change that, but. Maybe if you have the ASIN or if you have the ISBN, maybe we could do that there. Oh, you're not that guy. Okay. I was thinking that you're... Okay. No worries, man. I was thinking that you're the guy from Master Book Flippers. All good, man. Uh, if you have the ASIN or if you have the ISBN, let me know if you can... Uh, let me know if you can paste that in the chat there. All right. Let's see else. Anything else that we got here? Oh, uh, who's this one? No, that was not the book. All right, let's go. Let's go all the way to. We got two thousand results. Let's go all the way to the end result here. And looks like it did not want to find. Let's refresh this. <laughs> uh, one thousand four hundred. Let's sort by night. Can we sort by ninety day drop? Let's see. Yeah, let's sort by drop right here. We were we were looking by sales rank, I think. All right. Great pulls in. Elements of Venice. Let's see. All right, this looks like it could potentially sell for some pretty good money. Amazon was on the listing for 39. They went out of stock. Then basically people have been in and out of stock. Like the user account has been really low. There's a sell for $399, I think. Probably not. I mean, yeah, probably actually. Collectible collectible offer account went from three to two. So collectible offer probably sold there. So that's crazy. Then this sold, was this a collectible offer or used offer? This would have sold down here for about a hundred. That's crazy. Ooh. <laughs> uh 50 now it's down to 54 dollars. so it looks like it this might be a little bit undervalued sold there for 90 um 
let's go here. So this probably sold collectible condition here at 179. So this is something that the elements of Venice looks like it potentially has some pretty good value. Let's see what the offers look like. We got one in 54 plus shipping. And then we go up to 93. I don't think there's any prime. There is a prime seller. Prime sellers at a thousand plus. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has a, a, a thousand uh collectible good free prime delivery. wait collectible can be prime i didn't think that you could be prime eligible if you're doing collectible offers <laughs> excuse me he's got a thousand in stock <laughs> asking two hundred dollars i don't know why that's just so funny to me but that's hilarious uh, I love it. Joji, is your VA task the same day, same, same every day, or do they have different tasks? A good question. They have different tasks. So some days I have them exclusively sourcing. Some days it's like, hey, you know, prep center, just send a shipment in, go ahead and update, be cool, uh, go ahead and do some repricing. Um, generally, there's only a few things that they do. So I might say, hey, source this way, source this way. But generally, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> Generally, it's pretty predictable, like what they're going to do. Oh, this lead is juicy. Let's go. My favorite kind of keeper where there's a deep stock for years and now there's no stock. Exactly. Sent you the leak on Facebook. All right, Victor. Sounds good. Let me look at that right now. See if I can pull it up. All right. Uh, let's see. Victor. Okay, so here's the link right here. And then let me go and share a screen again so everyone can see what's going on. <laughs> All right, so this is it right here. So cannot see it again. But so what do I need to do here? I need to let's go back to what Victor had said I need to do. Victor said, basically, you need to replace the 10 digits in the middle of the link with the new ISBN you're looking for. All right. So the new ISBN. So I'm assuming that's this right here. That's the ISBN in the middle of the link. So are you saying this right here? No, that's that's clearly not what you mean. So I'm not understanding your, 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 your instructions. All right. Well, for some reason, this shows up now. This was not showing up in the in the past. But what I want to know about this in the first place is, does this come with all these books, these Bob books? six book collection box sets most of them are probably not going to they're probably just an individual book and all these goodwills look at all these goodwills oh my gosh goodwill is just racking up all of these individual so this has 11 in stock yeah so clearly uh this doesn't come with everything but this has quite a bit of value like i mean these sales are over 90 dollars. and then recently yeah victor said see it worked uh yeah it did work that that was a that was a really interesting that's really interesting I'm not sure how you figured that out <laughs> but that is honestly hilarious okay so going back to this element of venice but it's just this book is just hard to look at because i mean this sold here for at least 94 dollars. that that's what my guess is it sold there for 94 low shoes price here is about was 254 collectible condition is one 179 so I'm assuming that sold in collectible condition there, 179. Same thing here, collectible offer probably sold there at 179. So clearly this has a, has a little bit of value. It's just been hard because the price has been so crazy. It's been up and down so much. 59 sell there. Here's another sell. Oh, let me go ahead and go back. Here's another sell right around like 45. So clearly that moved pretty quickly. So yeah, I think this is going to be a buy. I mean, if we look back in time, Obviously, this book has value. When Amazon was on the listing, people were buying this at $39. So clearly, if you buy it at $54, I mean, it's over retail price. But considering people are willing to spend $39.99 from Amazon, they're, they're willing to, to buy this. But So what would I do? I would want to move this still. So you'd pay basically $58.32 for this. And I would want to move it. So I'd probably list it. Where would I list it? I'd probably list it like $119 or something. And, and just try to sell it because it doesn't move a lot, but it definitely does move. And I think, I think it would definitely move at that. That's my opinion. Elements of Venice. I'd have to get engaged in this, but, but that would be the plan. 
All right, everybody. I think I'm going to dip out. I'm, I'm tired, man. It's the end of the week of teaching. I am tired. Did a little bit of sourcing. Uh, I found a couple of books that if no one buys, I'm going to go ahead and, and buy uh, behind the scenes. But appreciate you stopping by. I'm definitely going to still stream tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m. PST. So if you're watching this later, hopefully, hopefully I'll see you there. And obviously, always, you know, always streaming at that time, 6.30 a.m. PST. So that's all I got for you. Take it easy. And I'm going to be live on Checkmate Flips' channel, Seth's channel, uh, over at uh, 4 p.m. So if you want to, if you want to hang out there, feel free to, feel free to stop by. Thanks. See you soon. Yeah, Seth, I'm going to see you soon. Denise says, thank you. You're welcome. Chris says, thank you. You're welcome. Seagull says, uh, thank you. You're welcome. All right, everybody. Take it easy. I'll see you tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. PST, and bye-bye. Peace.